Hi everyone, thanks for visiting my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Carol, the Thrifty Chic Housewife. If you enjoy the content you find here, please consider subscribing, like and share my videos, and follow me on social media. I will leave all the links in the description box below. So today is gonna to be part two of our wine kraut. Uh, in my last video, we started our sauerkraut and we were using this book, fermented vegetables. I will leave a link to this book's book in the description box for you if you're interested in getting it. It has a lot of really great recipes in it if you um, want to try your hand at fermenting or if you are great at fermenting and you just want some new ideas, this is a wonderful book. Lots and lots of great ideas in here. So in our last video, we started our kraut and um, we got it going and I let it sit for several days and here is an update for you. Okay guys, we are on day three of our sauerkraut. It's been, uh, this is the start of the third day since we did it and check out all of those bubbles. We're in my downstairs basement pantry. That's where I'm keeping this so it kind of looks like a dungeon in here but uh, we're working on getting it fixed up but I wanted to show you sauerkraut. Look at all those bubbles. Loving it. Looks pretty happy. So that's what you're looking for. We've got more brine. It's released more juices and we have some beautiful bubbles. So I will bring you back for our next update. So you got to see all the wonderful bubbles and the fermenting process starting. Kind of want to give you a feel of, of what you're looking for as it starts to ferment. So you got to see that. And then around day seven or so, I think, um, I went ahead and tasted it and um, added the wine. And here is the update on that. Okay guys, it is day number seven for our sauerkraut. So now it's time to taste it and see where we are flavor-wise. But you can see we have beautiful bubbles going on and nothing funky is going on in our jar. We've got really nice brine. So let's open one of our jars and see how we're doing. Take the lid off. Take your spring out and it smells nice and sour. So I'm thinking it's gonna taste pretty darn good. You're gonna get rid of your cabbage leaf. And add a little bit of our sauerkraut. Mmm. really good okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and put some wine in i'm going to be using a riesling this one is chateau saint michel um, and it is quite good so i'm going to use a riesling you can use whatever you want last time i used pinot grigio and it was delicious um, but this time we're going to try riesling and see if we get a little bit of a different flavor profile clean fork take out other cabbage leaf. Yeah, it all looks great. There's nothing strange going on in our jars. Just great sauerkraut taste and flavor. So um, let's go ahead. You can use up to a cup. So I'm going to use about a quarter of a cup in each one. I don't want it overpowering with wine but i do want to taste the wine so you can do up to a half a cup per jar and this is what i did last time and then i just kind of mixed it in the cabbage is packed in there pretty tight but i want the flavor throughout because our fermenting process is over now right now we're just trying to infuse some flavor so i'm fluffing up my cabbage a little bit but you, want to, you still want to make sure it's covered. But I want that wine to get down into each layer. And before anybody freaks out and I get any comments, I am using a clean fork. I'm not using the same fork that I tasted from. Um, 
last year when I made cranberry sauce, some people freaked out because I tasted it and I put the spoon back in the container. But it was just for my husband and I, so but I know it, that bothered some people. So just so you know, it's a clean fork. All right, so we're just gonna mix that around. And then um, last time I just went ahead and I put my cabbage leaf back on. So we keep everything nice and submerged. And then I put the spring, the spring back in and the lid back on. And we're just gonna let it sit for a day or two. You don't need to let it sit very long because like I said, our fermenting process is done. We really just want to infuse the flavor of the wine. And our lid, you guys, I am loving these springs in the lids. I just think they're fantastic. It was a genius idea on Ball's part. I haven't had anything weird go wrong with my sauerkraut batches that I've made. Okay, so you can see everything is nice and submerged again. Um, and that's what we want to see. And I'm just going to go ahead and put it back in my basement where I've been storing it in a nice, cool, dark place for the next two days. And then after that, we are going to, I'm going to bring you back and we're going to can it up. So today we are ready to can it up. It has been sitting for two days now since I added the wine. So the flavor is perfect. Um, it only needs a day or two just to let the flavors marry after you add your wine. I also wanted to mention that if you don't want to add the wine, you don't have to. You can just have what's called naked kraut um, and just go ahead and um, deal with it from there without adding the wine or any further flavoring. So today what I wanted to do is several of you expressed an interest in canning it. So I'm going to show you how to can it up. But I do want to say, and several of you mentioned this, and for those of you who read the comments, you'll notice this on my last video, that they wouldn't recommend canning it because you lose the benefits of the probiotics. And that's true. Anytime you add heat um, at 115 degrees is where you start losing the benefits of the uh, probiotic benefit of the sauerkraut or from any fermented food. So if you heated the sauerkraut at all to consume it, in whatever way, um, you're gonna lose some of that benefit. So if you want the probiotic benefits, it's just recommended that you just store it in the refrigerator and eat it at room temperature or cold. Um, it, but if you want it on your shelf just to have sauerkraut and you wanna make it shelf stable, then you will have to can it and just know that you are losing the probiotic benefits. I see the benefits of both, sometimes I just, want sauerkraut. I mean, we've bought it for years and years in the grocery store and it had no pro probiotic value to it. I just wanted sauerkraut on my shelf. And um, so sometimes people don't have the space in the refrigerator to store it and they were looking for some long-term a solution for long-term storage. So canning it is really the only way you can do that. I do want to say, however, the this sauerkraut, any sauerkraut, will store in your refrigerator. And I've had a hard time coming up with the perfect answer for how long it's good in the refrigerator. The Fermented Vegetables book says it will keep for up to a year. The National Center for Home Food Preservation, their website says sauerkraut is good in the refrigerator for several months. Whatever several months means, I don't know. Um, and the ball canning book, they say sauerkraut is good in the refrigerator for up to six months. So in my mind, especially when you're making a small batch like this, it's not going to be around very long. So um, that's not a huge issue for me. But if you think you're not going to eat it within six months or so, and you don't want to go past the six months and you're worried about keeping it for a year, then canning it is a solution. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so we are going to be actually steam canning our kraut. If you do not own a steam canner, you can water bath can. Water bath canning and steam canning, uh, the same principles apply. So you can do either one and your processing times are the same as well. Um, if you've watched my channel very long, you know that I am in love with steam canning and I will link in the description box for you the steam canner that I use, which is also a water bath canner and it is also a stock pot. So it's a multi-use uh, pot that I, just love and has been worth every penny. So I'm gonna be steam canning. I have my rack in the bottom of my steam canner. I have three quarts of simmering water. If you are water bath canning, you're gonna want your uh, canner about half full of simmering water. 
and um, as far as jars and lids you're we are going to be processing for 10 minutes or more so we don't need to pre sterilize them and we don't need to pre simmer our lids so my jars are just nice and clean you want to make sure you're using hot jars so I'm keeping mine hot in my sink full of very hot water I've washed my lids set them aside now the instructions from the National Center for Home Food Preservation on canning up sauerkraut their recommend or their guidelines are to firmly pack the kraut in your jars and then make sure you cover with the liquid. We are looking for one half inch head space and then you're going to, uh, we're going to be canning in pints, so we are going to be canning for 20 minutes because I'm going to raw pack it. If you want to hot pack your kraut, you can bring it up to a boil, a gentle boil, and then you can pack it and if you hot pack it, your processing time is 10 minutes adjusting for altitude. And I will leave all that information for you in the description box. I'm just going to raw pack mine. I like raw packing and it's easy to do. So what we're gonna do is get rid of our little cabbage leaf in there that was holding everything down. And I'm just gonna kind of <clears throat> mix things together again. It smells wonderful. All right, so let's, this and this recipe is, we're only gonna get about two pints out of this. Maybe, probably a little bit more because they're wanting me to pack it pretty firmly. So we're gonna go ahead and I think you can see okay. And we're just going to start putting our kraut in our jar. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pour some of the liquid on there. We are at get rid of that jar. we are at our half inch head space. It does not say the instructions from the National Center for Home Food Preservation do not say to debubble, which I thought was interesting. Um, I, I think it's because they're wanting you to pack it pretty firmly, but I'm going to go ahead and just kind of run my debubbling tool around the edge of it and then make sure everything is under the liquid. Okay, our crowd is in there, firmly packed. Debubbled. Now we're going to go ahead and wipe the rim of our jar. I always dip a paper towel in white vinegar to go around the rim of my jar. Gets it nice and clean. And then you want to center your lid and then screw on your band fingertip tight. And we're going to lift that into our canner. And then we'll do the next jar. And go ahead and put that in our canner. I'm only going to uh, can up just two pints. It looks like we could probably get a third pint, but I'm just gonna stick that in the refrigerator. I just wanted to show you guys how to can it for those of you who were interested. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and put our lid on and we're going to crank up the heat. If you are Water bath canning, you wanna make sure that you your uh, water covers your jars by at least an inch. If you're steam canning, <clears throat> that's not necessary. You already have enough water in your canner for that. So what we're gonna do is on the steam canner, I have a dial gauge that tells me when I'm ready to start timing. If you're water bath canning, you wanna bring it up to a full rolling boil, and then we can start our processing time. So when we get there, I'll bring you back. Okay guys, I am up to temperature and ready to start timing. So I'm gonna set my timer for 20 minutes. If you're water bath canning, make sure you have come to a full rolling boil. And at this point, we want to adjust our heat so that we're not, it's not a vigorous boil for the whole time. We just wanna maintain a full boil if you're water bath canning. For steam canning, we just wanna make sure that our dial gauge stays in the go zone. So we're gonna slowly adjust our heat and just keep it in the go zone or keep it at a nice full boil and when your 10 20 minutes are up i'll bring you back okay guys we are all done i went ahead and turned my heat off after my timer went off um 
If you are water bath canning, you're gonna to wanna to let your jars sit in your canner for five minutes to cool after you remove the lid. If you are steam bath canning, you do not need to wait the five minutes. So we can go ahead and take our jars out. And there's our beautiful sauerkraut smells amazing. So um, what you want to do is let your jars sit undisturbed for 12 to 24 hours and then check your seals, remove the bands, wash your jars and uh, label them, store them in a cool dark dry place. Um, so I'm, I hope you guys have enjoyed coming along with me for the sauerkraut adventure. I'm going to be doing some more things from the fermented vegetables book. They just have some great fun recipes in there and if you like I said if you're wanting to do the ferment fermenting for the health benefits of the probiotics just don't can it but if you want to just have something shelf stable it's fine to can it and it will taste great for any meal so anyway I'll also try to do some recipes recipes for you that use sauerkraut I know a lot of times we can things or we ferment things or um, we dehydrate or any way of preserving food we we do those methods and then some people will say well it's on my shelf i'm not quite sure what to do with it so i'm going to try harder uh, this year when we do any type of food preservation is to share some recipes on how i would use it so um, we'll have some sauerkraut recipes coming up so thanks for coming along with me if you have any questions or comments leave them for me in the comment section below like and share my videos and i will see you next time have a great day